Hundreds and hundreds of faithful are making their way to Gower, Missouri, in order to visit the remains of Sister Wilhelmina, a beloved Benedictine nun who died four years ago on Ascension Thursday, and they were transferring her coffin from her burial place to the chapel, and the coffin was broken. It was just a wooden coffin. It was broken in half, and one of the sisters, one of the nuns, saw Sister, the deceased, Sister Wilhelmina's foot preserved. Apparently, this led to an investigation, and sure enough, when they opened the coffin, they found that she was incorrupt. Now, in the Catholic tradition, there have been, I wouldn't say many, but there are several saints in the history of the church who even sometimes hundreds of years after they've died, when they're exhumed and maybe moved to a church or a chapel or an altar, they're found to be incorrupt either entirely in their body or certain parts of their body are incorrupt. And this is deemed to be a miracle and a sign of sanctity. And Sister Wilhelmina would be the first African-American woman to be recognized as an incorruptible. And many are asking, is this a sign of her sanctity? Should she be canonized? And should the process of first beatifying her and canonizing her saint begin? Sister Wilhelmina was beloved by many during her life. Here's a picture of her with the sisters, the Benedictines. And... She was known for her love for the traditional Latin Mass, for her devout recitation of the Divine Office, her return to the traditional pre-Vatican II understanding of the religious life. You'll see in the picture um, right here, she's in a full habit with the veil and is inspiring those under her charge uh, to be truly brides of Christ, modest, decorated in sanctity, in the beauty of holiness. She's inspired so many nuns and so many faithful, and I think the story of how they discovered her remains is worth telling. And uh, this is from Claire Marie Murkowski's article on LifeSite News. Uh, she has the account here of how the Benedictine sisters in Gower, Missouri, discovered Sister Wilhelmina's body. Uh, Sister Cecilia relates, I thought I saw a complete, full, intact foot. Now, this is because when they were moving her body to the chapel, the coffin was broken. And by the way, she was not embalmed, and she was in a simple box, and the box already, because it was cracked open, had dirt and water inside the coffin. All right, so it's not like she was in a sealed vacuum sealed box and was embalmed. She was buried in a very simple, humble and poor way. She said, I thought I saw completely full intact an intact foot. And I said, I didn't just see that. So I looked again more carefully. And on further examination, she screamed, I saw her foot and the nuns began to cheer. According to Cecilia, the body weighed about 80 to 90 pounds instead of the expected 20 pounds that skeletal remains should have weighed. She said, I mean, there was just this sense that the Lord was doing this. Right now, we need hope. We need it. Our Lord knows that. And she has been a testament to hope and faith and trust. Not only was her body in a remarkable, preserved condition, her crown and bouquet of flowers were dried in place. The profession candle with the ribbon, her crucifix, and her rosary were all intact. Even more remarkable was the complete preservation of her holy habit. Now, for those that aren't Catholic, the habit is are the robes. It's what a nun wears. It's called her habit. Her habit was made from natural fiber, so not polyester, for which she fought so vigorously throughout her religious life. Now, I have to pause here. There's been a debate in the religious life. Traditionally, the habits of monks, friars, nuns, sisters were made of coarse material. Um, they, were, they were made to stand up to the elements, of 
course, and not have to be replaced regularly. But they were also known to be uncomfortable. This is part of the penance of being a religious, of being a sister, a monk, or a brother. And after the 1960s, a lot of religious congregations said, you know what, let's just go, let's simplify our habit, not wear the veil, make it smaller, and then let's go to synthetic fibers, polyester. And instead of having that sort of old school, old world, heavy look to the habits, which are pretty inspirational when you see them in person, they went to the lighter uh, synthetic materials. And there's, there's kind of been a debate for decades, should religious be using synthetics or using the stuff that their religious brothers and sisters, the Benedictines, the Franciscans, the Dominicans have been wearing, not just for like a few decades, but for centuries, and in the case of the Benedictines, for over a millennium. So Sister Wilhelmina wanted these natural habits for the sisters, so she was wearing that, and they, those natural fibers, which are biodegradable, biodegradable, pardon me, had not decayed. While the lining of the coffin made of sim similar material was completely deteriorated and gone. People see us, said the sister, and it's like, oh, she's a sister. Or she's wearing that because she's given in her life. She believes in God. Maybe I should think about God. The religious habit is a sign of things to come, of supernatural, of our last end, heaven, hell, purgatory. So here she is. This is Sister Wilhelmina before she passed away four years ago on Ascension Thursday. And then here is her body. And hundreds, if not thousands, in just the last few days have flocked to Missouri in order to pay their respects, to ask Sister Wilhelmina's intercessions with Jesus Christ, and to show honor to our Lord in what seems to be a miracle. Uh, so I had heard of, of Sister Wilhelmina before she died, and I'd heard good things and people that were familiar with the nuns at Gower. And I think this is um, a wonderful, whether or not she's canonized, be beautiful if, if they went through with the beatification and the canonized. This is a beautiful testament, and it reminds us. See, if you were Catholic in most nations that had a Catholic presence before the 1950s, your parish life, your, your first communion, your confirmation, your parochial school existence, all these things would have had the graceful presence of nuns. Now, I know nuns aren't always, uh, there are these stories of nuns with their rulers, and there were stern nuns and disciplinary nuns. There has to be in a school. But I think one of the things that's missing for contemporary Catholicism in the Western world is the absence of nuns. What a beautiful thing it would be to attend Mass every Sunday or just to be around the church or just to know there's a cloister and to see the, the beautiful habit, the robes, the mantle, the, the veil, the wimple, all of these things as a sign of religious austerity, penance. And instead of having this contemporary rah, 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 girl power, girl boss culture, here are the true heroines, the true ascetical warriors who are combating evil through their penance, through their prayers, through their patience, and through their chastity. Yesterday was the 17th anniversary of Joy and I becoming Catholic, and we're very glad. We have eight beautiful children uh, who are all practicing Catholics. And one of the things that I wish I could provide for my kids is a beautiful old school parochial Catholic school. And then also just the presence of male and female religious friars, 
monks, nuns. I mean, we know some, you know, we go on pilgrimages and then they're with us and we see them, but it's not part of our, our daily or weekly Catholic life. And I wish they could have that. I mean, our daughter Elizabeth, for her first communion, had uh, several nuns that that helped her and, and taught her, made sure she knew her prayers and and did arts and crafts with her and taught her about Jesus and the tabernacle. So one of our kids did have that experience, and I'm very grateful for that. But in general, I think our young people don't have this witness. So if this is a miracle and if this brings to light the beauty of the cloistered religious life of the Benedictines, who go back to St. Benedict and his twin sister, Scholastica. And this inspires young women, all women, to consider the vocation that Sister Wilhelmina so beautifully demonstrated for the world and perhaps received some kind of miraculous testimony from the Holy Spirit. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. I hope to. Uh, it'd be great to, to visit Missouri and to go to Gower. I would love to visit uh, the incorrupt body of Sister Wilhelmina and to learn more about the nuns and how we can support them. And I, I want to challenge everyone watching that if you don't have nuns near you, I would encourage you to spend some time, maybe spend half an hour, or ask around or ask your priest, hey, I want to benefit from the prayers of nuns. Um, are there local nuns that I could be in touch with? Are there nuns that I can be in touch with through mail? And then how can I financially with money support these nuns? Our family supports, I'm not going to name the, the, the uh, congregations and the nuns that we support, but we support some nuns and we depend and rely on their prayers. I wish we had, we were around them more, but I think it's important for every priest to have nuns praying for him, every family, father, mother, kids, to have these nuns praying for us. They are not wasting their time in the cloister. They are calling down. They are pleading mercies and graces for our broken world. So they are they're truly the, the hidden advocates the silent warriors. So may the soul of Sister Wilhelmina rest in peace. And if she's in beatitude, if she has the beatific vision, may she pray for us. I see some of you already in the live chat. You're saying, I'm going. I'm on my way to Missouri. I'm going to visit the body of Sister Wilhelmina, the first African-American in corrupt, a female religious, a Benedictine sister. St. Benedict, pray for us. St. Scholastica, pray for us. Thanks for watching. Remember our Lord Jesus Christ, you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless. Godspeed. Make sure you like the video with the thumbs up. Give that thumbs up to Sister Wilhelmina. And if you like this content, you want to learn more and, and keep up with some of the good, positive Catholic news that's going on in the world, please make sure you subscribe and click the bell to be notified in the future, and also watch the next Dr. Taylor Marshall podcast. God bless and Godspeed.